Well, Jim and Paige both had to quit school because of the help support the family. Uh -huh. so yeah, they I never went to just to part way through the 10th grade. Yeah. Yeah. We started fishing at that age. Commercial, really? yeah. Well, as a little kid. Yeah. Back yeah. then, if, if he was yeah. big enough to stand up to the bar, you could go in there and buy a drink. <laughs> Can you recall any landmarks about the area? I mean, may or may not something like, what were your favorite things, like, I don't know, like, what do you remember growing up you like a lot that may not be there now? Well, right over there where Catchers is, there's a place they called, the people who live there were called Pikes, and they were ra racing people from Chicago Maple, or something. Maple, 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 yeah. And they bought these big old outboard motors down here and would race them around. Yeah, but most all these boats now, it's got them big motors on them, as much time as they're racing them. Do you guys ever recall, in your old high school, which is now our school, a car being brought up to the second story? Yeah, it was a, they put it up on the... You didn't uh, play any part in that budget, no. did you? Do you know who did? I don't know. I think I was about in the seventh or eighth grade, and I think it was an old Austin or something they put up there. Forget who it was. Yeah, because we heard about that today. We're trying to figure out how they got a car in the second story, and I was hoping maybe you guys would tell us how, like, set by stuff. We used to smoke in class, and then we'd... Have the cigarette on the string. Somebody come along, you'd put it out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I want to have a cigarette. I'll try that. Of course, back then you didn't have any air conditioning, so the yeah. windows were all open. But two of my people that taught me in high school are still alive. Fred Marksman and his wife, Marguerite. He still lives in Newport Richie. You still uh, talk yeah. to them? or? I, see him. I haven't seen him in probably two or three years. He's one of those radio hams. But he tried to teach me algebra, and I never did learn how to speak that stuff. Breaker, breaker, one, two. You guys, you guys never had one of those, did you? Yeah, ham radio. Really they had them on the boat. You didn't even know nothing about radios that time and day. No. Oh, yeah, the company. What um, prominent businesses were going around during the Depression for, if you recall? Well, mullet, mackerel fishing, and sponging. We, yeah, that's that's the main thing. When we was growing up, we we sponged here. We had two sailboats. They didn't have any engines in them at all. I mean, you depend on the wind to go wherever you wanted to go. And then they had these things like that that little boat up on the port there. on the ports there. That, that's a dinky. They rode around. They had nine foot oars that, that you you rode around the golf out there. You guys bring your own food. How much? Well, I can't tell you how much food was, but Mother had five dollars to buy our week's groceries. So you can figure out it was very cheap. Yeah. We'd have a. Now you go to the store, you get two bags, at fifty, $5. sixty dollars. Yeah. You guys got like bucket loads of food. Yeah, we never went hungry, no. Well, you don't want to tell these sport fishermen that, but a long time ago we used to go out in the Gulf and harpoon tarpon. I don't know whether you've ever seen a water fire or not, but at night there wasn't any lights in there then. The phosphorus in the, the water. The phosphorus in the water, you could tell whether it was a stingray, a shark, or, or a tarpon. And these tarpon came in real close to the shore back then. Sometimes what to be a hundred in a bunch. Yeah. And you go out there and you would spear them, and, and the spear came off the pole, and you had him right with a by a, a rope. And sometimes it'd burn your hands up, right? Yeah. And then we'd bring those tarpon in here, and we would clean them and smoke them, and Mother made fish cakes out of them. Uh, can yeah. you tell us what a family meal was like, and you know, you well, she always put. Mother always put good food on the table three times a day. However, she she did that back then. You didn't have the choices of the food that you have today. But she would always put on there, and, and everybody sat down and ate at the same time. And we had some old man that came down here, and there was a golf course across the river there, Gene Sarzen's golf course. He just fenced the whole thing in and, and homesteaded it and got it for nothing. 
he had always had two or three cows there that he milked. Well, he would bring us milk in the morning and the evening. The mother would feed him for breakfast and supper. And then he babysit for us a lot of times. And I think that's what helped us got some education because he would read to us and he was deaf. So you never went to sleep while he was reading to you. <laughs>